All right, guys. So this is uh, this is Francisco, and this is a project. I'll let him introduce it. But he was building. So I built this. Alan. 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 <laughs> We're starting. All right. So this is uh, this is Francisco. Um, I'll let him introduce himself. But this is a project actually he was building just a couple of weeks ago at um, a hackathon that Alan put on for uh, for crossover Edinburgh. Um, and so this is what is it? Computer vision and dancing. So off you go. Okay, uh, so this is a project uh, made overnight actually. <laughs> it's a bit messy and doesn't work that well. Um, but it's using knowledge and technology that's been around for ages. I mean, it's, uh, it's based around bits and bobs of math and statistics, so it doesn't go that far. And obviously, computer vision. So um, I'm going to try and like, lay out the foundations of the topic uh, overall. And then I'll show what I constructed. Basically, it's made a very simple uh, script that uh, detects motion from your camera. And there's loads of those. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work with webcam. There's a Kinect as well, uh, all these motion te uh, detection technologies. Uh, but what I was experimenting with was with dance. So try and like imprint your, your silhouette while you're dancing, try and hand the circles, try and play the ball on a screen, and all these activities. To Going, uh, well, all these instruments work actually. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's go for the overview in terms of like how to describe the topic. It's all really like down to layman terms, it's not going into any depth. Uh, it's quite basic and it's actually missing some of the correct concepts, let's put it that way, because it's been quite simplified. Um, so we're going to uh, kind of like rethink how colors are displayed on the screen and what do they actually mean when you look at a, a flat picture. The picture may be flat, but it's taking a, an image of something that was actually in three dimensions and there's a lot of things like lighting and such that go into that. So we're going to work on how to visualize a 2D picture, let's say, in three dimensions. And then we're going to look at two techniques used to detect motion. Um, so let's uh, crack on. Uh, so here, this is more metaphorical than actually correct, but you know, let's pretend we'll have synesthesia and that Mondays are red, Fridays are blue, and that colors have numbers, yeah? So imagine you grab all your colors, yeah? And it's a bit more complicated than that because it's not just a single number, but we can do this anyways. Imagine you have all your colors and you label your colors. So you start from, you know, red and you label them all the down to violet, whatever. You start labeling from one to a thousand, one to two hundred fifty whatever convention you choose, this is kind of formal and not exactly correct. But you can think of the colors as numbers, because words are just labels as well. Um, now, what this, where it becomes interesting or it becomes cool, is, oh, you know, here's a manatee. <laughs> is it the image of choice, yeah? So this is a flat image, right? There's, I mean, obviously it's a 3D animal uh, in real life, it's a flat image. Uh, but if you think of it, you know, as having an x-axis here and a y-axis there, uh, you have a grid, yeah? And each grid, you go down and down, and you have a color, you know, as a point. For each x and y, there is a color. Now, if that color is a number, then you can project that color onto the z-axis, yeah? And visualize this, you know, this pretty little sea creature, just flatten it up. So it's a, it's a plane now, and we're going to project the colors. This is just a visualization on how to project those those colors uh, from focus to mountain, you project the colors as what they actually are. Okay, so it's a, it's a not entirely into details how it actually is, but more or less it skims the real idea. Uh, now, now that colors are numbers, um, you can do a lot of interesting things with them. Uh, so if you have you have red and red, you subtract red from red, uh, and they're the exact same shade of red. Or get zero, which is labeled black. So you can do a lot of, let's say, arithmetic operations with these colors. Um, and what I used, uh, what I used for the, the motion detection algorithm that I wrote, uh, is I combined two things. But what I did was differential images. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't only start writing this slide today, but I wanted to use uh, the example of a white circle in a, in a black, you know, in a black uh, background. And if you take three images of the circle in time and the circle has moved 
tiny bit, yeah, you can subtract the most recent image to the one just before. And that will give you all the difference, like exactly the difference, because everything else is the same color, except for those two that are the difference. That will give you the difference. And you can do the same with the other two time frames you have. And by conjuncting this, so by taking only the things that are common between these two differences, you actually extract out what the, what the change in motion was, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so if I, if I run this algorithm, actually, we just have to go backwards a lot to actually run it. If I run this algorithm, it would just be, the way I put it, it would just be completely black. And if I move very, very faint lines, kind of like highlights on where the movement is happening, because it's subtracting frame and frame, and then taking out the changes, or conjuncting the changes between them. Uh, now, in this example I gave, where you have a completely flat white circle, a black background, you have no such things as shading. You only have two colors. So taking these things away is very simple. But when you, when you're in front of a camera and you actually move backwards a bit, then the colors that you are made of change as well. So when you subtract them, actually there's the subtraction is not going to give zero, zero in points that were equal colors before because they're not anymore because the lighting actually changes your colors. So just using this um, to detect motion is, uh, brings out a lot of noise and only detects the bits that you move really hard. I remember from the camera going, like, oh, moving my arms, shaking it really hard to kind of see this little white lines come up. Uh, but it, was, but it, it wasn't that great. Um, so what I learned from afterwards was uh, maybe feature extraction could be the word. Right? What I worked on was amplifying those, that little bit of motion. And it was really painful because I was printing the values that were out and these were just like massive lists of numbers that made no sense. And after a lot of number crunching and reading articles that other people have worked with, I managed to get something out of these numbers. Uh, well, they were just coordinates and for each coordinate there was, there was three values, uh, red, blue, green, and that's what made up the colors. Um, so in the first one I just discarded that and I turned it into black and white to make it easier for me. But I used some little magic uh, which are called kernels. And kernels are these, think of them as windows. You know, windows, uh, a grid. You can set the size of this window. And you go through your image, changing every little color. Um, they're used for edge detection and other things. But you stand on a pixel in your image, so you stand on a little color, a little cord in your image. And you, for example, you can add up everything around it and that becomes a new value. So it's a way of altering everything in the picture with respect to all the other things around it. And what I used was a Gaussian kernel. Um, so I'm going to try and outline. So I already explained what kernels are. Uh, Gaussian is uh, another name for the normal distribution. And it's, uh, it's just a frame in which you can fit data. And most data falls into this. Most things that you're checking the frequency for how much an event occurs and you're classifying into groups form to the Gaussian distribution. The more data you have, the more it forms a Gaussian. So what's the advantage of working with Gaussians? Because if you picture, you know, the, the picture I gave of, like, you know, you have the, the seal and you, <laughs> you extrapolate it to a 3D thing, if you fit these curves into Gaussians, you can sharpen these curves up so that you actually get the features you want, but you can extend them out more. Um, so it's a good way of fitting data. Uh, the Gaussian kernel is just like I said, these little windows, but you can choose a parameter you can extend how big the window is, small it is and modify the data to bring out the features you want. Uh, and well, I mean, in terms of underlying, that's it. So now let's try and uh, demo a little bit of this app and it will probably crash. <laughs> I'm sure it will crash. <laughs> but um, let's see. Okay, so uh, let me choose the order <laughs> in which I want to probably go from the worst one to the not so worst one. Okay, there we go. Save. It's a struggle here. Um, so this one is a ball on a screen. That if I move, it moves. <laughs> and it is really rebellious because there was no physics here. I hate physics. <laughs> so the physics is really poor. Um, and also it disappears from the screen. <laughs> um, so that was an interesting. Um, 
But you know, like the idea would be to like, you know, we need to sort of game to interact, like really simple stuff. Uh, it runs really fast, like, it's like over a thousand lines and everything's quite efficient. Um, but let's have a look at some of the other stuff. Oh, play some music <laughs> for this bit, because it's, it's quite groovy. Right, a bit low, a little bit low. I'm not going to speak much of for this, but I'm just going to show, uh, I forgot what the names are here. Mm. Okay. So, oh, how tetric. It's <laughs> a good choice. Um, so, this one here, this is the uh, kind of the ideas I had to combine with actual dancing. It's embarrassing. Oh, no, the screen's down there. So, basically, it follows your motion kind of in the way you dance and move things around. <laughs> Although, I do think there's a lot of noise because if I stop moving, yeah. So, there's. When there's a shining light on some of the metal and stuff, it kind of catches that and has noise as well. Um, let's see if we can catch this noise. Oh, there's light there as well. <laughs> so, um, well, when I was testing it, you try to you know, like, kind of like not such an interfering background, the dots kind of travel around with you. And it was just kind of fun to play around with. Um, could you maybe turn off some of the lights, perhaps? Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Better? Yeah. Cool. So yeah. A little random changing colours follow my motion more or less. <laughs> but let's try this one, see if it works. I mean there's a lot of interference, a lot less than in my room. <laughs> a lot more so. One of the stuff I was working on is obviously getting rid of your image of the face and projecting it onto a screen. Well, that does not look like my body. <laughs> I suppose the wrong hand. Oh, yeah, that's the right hand. Ah, the annoying thing is that cameras reflect you in the direction you don't think they are because it's like a mirror. So it's quite annoying. But I spent a while playing with these figures, trying to make them more fluid like. And one of the ideas I had, which I thought would be quite cool, is you can see the colours changing randomly. So we know all random colours. Uh, it would be nice to make the colours kind of like change with respect to the frequency of the music playing at the time. So I had a lot of kind of fun ideas. Of course, no real application commercial, like no commercial application, but it's quite annoying how they talk, but they stop moving. Stop moving again. Thing here. Yeah. But yeah, um, more or less that's, that's it, that's my presentation. <laughs> interested in the mathematics behind it, so that's why I chose to build it. Um, like my main application was like, like because I would use it for myself at least, is like you know you're in an office and you get really short breaks, so sometimes it's not enough to go out for a walk. At least I experienced that when I went work. So imagine you had these interactive kind of little games you can play in your computer that react with you type of thing instead of you know just playing something that's finger and stuff, maybe yeah. moving about a bit, some dance apps and stuff. Uh, other things I looked at was motion tracking for performance. Because another thing it can do, yeah, another thing it can, do, yeah, another thing it can do is that um, I didn't display that, but you can, if I move like that, it can do a watermark of my movement and imprint it on the screen. So it was a lot more accurate, which you know, maybe a better webcam and better mouse. <laughs> And you maybe as a dancer, you could be seeing your image projected on a projector as you're dancing in real time, and that could help a lot. Because I had I did a lot of dancing in high school as well, and we we're all like uh, narcissists. We we're looking in the mirror all the time. I was not looking at ourselves. I was trying to catch the motion while it was going. Uh, but you know, it's it's not that great. And you have to film all the time. Maybe something that films it for you and projects at the same time. So it's, it was in that area in sports and dance type of area that we're looking at. Kind of ideas, yeah. Nice. Um, 
So I definitely see an immediate application to uh, real time electronic music performance systems. And I don't know, I can see my hands on the business side at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like um, one of, like we were thinking, like, you know, clubs. Like imagine if like the walls were all interactive, like oh, totally. dancing stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if you're drunk, you see all these colors, like oh my god, <laughs> and it changes the music. And like I was, I was, in, I was inspired kind of by like a group of art students that I was working with during that weekend, and it was all really artsy fun in the, the applications, but as well the artsy fun in. So maybe you know. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, does anyone have any questions? Have you spoken to anyone about uh, developing on further? Um, oh, well, we had time. <laughs> um, like with the guys I worked with, we want to keep like making it better. Mm -hmm. You know, reading more about it, and they because they're both like graphic design and art students. They wanted to like, you know, all they said just came up with all the colors and stuff, and like actually come up with something pretty out of it mm -hmm. instead of just random colors and blobs and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're, we're meeting up like when we can during weekends and developing it better. Uh, more as a fun kind of project.